Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good late morning, good early afternoon, all the times of the day, everybody. It's Ross Twedlier from Holding Give with my Premier League predictions for the 2023-2024 season. Let's get cracking with a knocking straight away. Your Premier League winners for the upcoming season will be Manchester City. I think that Arsenal are going to get close, but the difference maker will be is just the fact that I can't see Manchester City letting Riyad Mahrez go this summer and not replace Nick with a like for like, especially when they've let all the goals of Gundogan go and not replaced him with a like for like. They're not going to do that twice and therefore once they've secured a top quality winger to replace Riyad Mahrez, I think that'll be the difference maker for Manchester City in retaining their title and making history and getting four in a row for the first time since things were invented. So there you go. Manchester City are going to be your Premier League champions for the upcoming season. The top six. We're going to go for the top six in the Premier League, Manchester City will obviously be first. Arsenal will be second. I think Manchester United will be third because that's where they finished last season, didn't they? They're not getting any worse, are they, with the signings they're making? They're letting McTominay go. They're letting Maguire go. So they're getting the, the deadish wood out of there. They're not, they're not good enough wood. They're not prime mahogany. Uh, they're getting that out the football club. They've got an upgrade in nets for, with Onana. I think he's going to be better for the team than what David De Gea was by the end of his stint at Manchester United. So I think Man United will get third spot once again. And then fourth place in the league, I think it's going to be Liverpool. I can't see that business being done, especially in the midfield area. A complete rebuild was there, sort of bragged about, put out there in the press before the likes of Henderson and Fabinho went. And quite honest with you, they haven't signed enough players, even with Fabinho and Henderson in the squad. So the fact they've gone, they're going to have to go and get a few more players. And I think they maybe will. And I say maybe because Jack Atkins on the Hole and Give Football podcast he is fully conveyed to me what a bunch of arseholes FSG can be and how much Jurgen Klopp has bought into their arseholery over the last few years. Rounding off the top six now, I think that no European football will help both Spurs and Chelsea finish in the top six, which means that Aston Villa, Brighton, Newcastle will be battling out for 7th, 8th and ninth in the Premier League this season. I just think in terms of Newcastle, I don't think our squad depth is there for the Champions League, for the Carabao Cup, for the FA Cup, for the Premier League, for the Seller Cup sponsored by Visit Malta that we won last weekend. Uh, I don't think our squad depth is anywhere near enough uh, as to what it should be for the season we've got coming up. While Aston Villa, I think, have done some very good business getting uh, Bailey in from uh, Bayern Munich and stuff like that and obviously uh, Thielman's in the midfield as well I think their squad depth will let them down because I think they'll go a long way in their European competition but more on that a little bit later and Brighton I think that McAllister's obviously going to be a massive loss, but you just assume one of these signings they've made this summer is going to be the next McAllister, or they've maybe had the next McAllister lined up before McAllister left, because that's how Brighton work. But I just think they'll fall short, because I think a lot. the, the more publicity they got last season, the more teams will work them out next season, if that makes some sort of sense. De Zerbi Ball was kind of sprung upon the Premier League when he replaced Graham Potter, so I think that now he's been fully bedded into the Premier League. The managers more expect what to expect from De Zerbi Derby ball, so I think that might see them fall short a bit. And of course, they've got European football to contend with as well. But yes, Spurs and Chelsea, I really like the look of Chelsea, especially. Um, in pre-season because Newcastle uh, obviously were in that uh, Premier League series tournament with Chelsea they look very very good on the ball Newcastle snatched a draw late on against them in the, the, one of the earlier pre-season friendlies against them but the, the way that Pochettino had them set up of course they didn't have a lot of players at his disposal when they played Newcastle have made signings since then will they be good signings only time will tell they're certainly on the younger side of things but I think he'll get them playing better football especially than what they were playing last season it couldn't get any worse but you know what I'm trying to say and I think Spurs are going to be one of the dark horses of the season but more on them a little bit later on as well as for relegation we're going straight down to the bottom three because who cares about my prediction of who finishes 12th in the bloody Premier League I certainly don't so I doubt you will either 18th position it's me big one for the season I'm going Everton I think time is going to finally catch up with them as I'm sat here on August the 8th uh, a matter of days before the season started their only signings this summer have been Ashley Young and Dan Juma obviously Ashley Young is 72 years old and Dan Juma did 
made sweet bugger all at Tottenham Hotspur last season. I guess you could say that a lot of uh, Spurs' squad did sweet bugger all last season, but he, excuse me, he did nothing, so I don't think there's going to be too much of a, of a uh, what, what am I trying to say here? Too much of a, a star signing for them? I think it'll make a difference, but not too much of a difference. And I think maybe something else could be Everton's downfall this season, but once again, I'll get onto that a little bit later. 19th position, I think their home record will keep them off the bottom of the table. I'm going to go for Luton finishing 19th. I just don't think their squad is anywhere near strong enough to survive in the Premier League. But that Kenilworth Road, the different sort of atmosphere, the different changing rooms, the new stand, the littler stadium, all that sort of stuff, that'll play to their advantage when your Manchester Cities and teams like that will come into... Maybe not Manchester City, maybe someone like, I don't know, Brighton, when they visit Kenilworth Road, that'll play to Luton's favour and they might pick up the odd win here and there. And then bottom of the table, without any shadow of any doubt, is going to be Sheffield United. I do not understand understand what is going on at Sheffield United apparently they've got no money I, I, I went to uni with a Sheffield United fan he was telling me this in the WhatsApp chat the other day but they've signed an Arsenal reserve team player for five million but the big one is they've let their best player from last season and die go to Marseille he's not on their squad anymore and as I'm sat here as I said again on the 8th of August they're letting their second best player Sander Berg go to Burnley one of the teams that were promoted with them last season what are they doing it's as if they want to get relegated and they will deserve to finish last in the Premier League what on earth are the owners at Sheffield United doing the red and white wizards I don't know top scorer in the Premier League it's an easy one I guess Erling Haaland will get get that one again because he plays for Manchester City although as I said earlier with the lack of Gundogan and the lack of a like for like replacement for Gundogan it'll be interesting to see if the, maybe the supply chain towards Erling Haaland might be a bit more or a bit less than it was last season which could have the knock on effect of affecting his goal tally the dark horse team of the season now people are going to laugh at me for this one but I don't care I believe in me convictions and I'm going for it me bollocks are root Spurs will be my dark team or dark horse team of the season Season. Uh, a lot of people, I guess, would expect me to say someone like Brighton, but I think Brighton, the amount of publicity they got in the second half of the season especially, I think everybody knows about Brighton. So I'm going to go for Spurs as my dark horse team of the season because everybody seems to have written them off over the course of the, the way last season sort of petered out into nothing. Then bringing in Ange Postacoglu, who is a nothing name to a lot of people, even though I'll very much, and um, me personally, I love listening to Postacoglu talk. He's the sort of manager I'd love to see manager Newcastle because he takes no bother and he plays attractive attacking football. Spurs have had the big names of Mourinho and Conte. That didn't work, so why couldn't Ampostacoglu work as well? I don't know why it couldn't, but I think he'll bring the attacking football to Spurs. As I said earlier, the lack of European football will certainly play into their favour. I think Harry Kane, the closer and closer we get to the start of the season, apparently the news was saying today that if we do get to the start of the season, and he is, a, he is still a Spurs player, he will end up staying at Spurs, so I think he will stay at Spurs, and that's always going to be a Brucey bonus. I think the dealings they've done this summer have been quite smart, especially Madison and Solomon, who was on loan at, at, uh, no, at West Ham there, on loan at Fulham last season. He looks a quality player on the wing. Madison, we all know, is a fantastic player and I think ideal for a team like Spurs. Obviously, helping Kane a bit more than maybe other midfielders would do. Getting Pedro Porro and Kulazewski on permanent deals, I think is more good business by Spurs and also bringing back Lascelles, who I think people have forgotten about him. I thought he was a decent player. Not one of the best players in the league, but but certainly better or a better option to have if you want to play attack and football than maybe Hoiberg would be or maybe uh, Skip would be in the middle of the park. Obviously, Benton Coe's there. He was a bit more of an all-action player, but I think having the Celso back, a different option in the middle of the park, that'll be in Spurs' favour. And I expect Spurs to upset a fair few teams this season because, again, I think a lot of people have written them off, but I don't think I would write them off. I think they're going to be the dark horse team of the season. The first Premier League manager sacking of the season, going back to something I said a bit earlier about Everton, I think it will be Sean Dyche further proven. The decision makers at Everton have no Scooby-Doo what the hell they're doing. No money to sign players because of what the deal, uh, transfer dealings have done in the past. The new stadium taking finances away from the club or the, the transfer kit, I should say, as well. The, the, maybe the brand of football won't be that the Everton fans like, and even though I, I do think they now realise where they are and what they've got to do just to stay in the Premier League. It seems to be happening every single season, so they can't be expecting the free-flowing football of years gone 
by under Myers, eh? And stuff. Well, it wasn't really free from football, was it? I guess it was for a period of time. Lump it long to Fellaini. Okay, Hill. Flick it on. James Beatty sticks it in. But you know what I'm trying to say? They know what they expect this season, but I do think that Sean Dyche, just with everything that Everton are, I, do, I, do, I have no confidence. If I was an Everton fan, I would have no confidence of the people who run, uh, run my football club, even though they're giving me a lovely stadium. They've given me many big money signings, which largely haven't worked out. I think Sean Dyche will be the first managerial sacking just because of things going on around him rather than what he is doing because he's doing the best he can I thought he did well to keep Everton up last season I like Sean Dice as a manager I like listening to him talk he maybe doesn't play the best football but that's because of the surroundings around him he had no money at Burnley and he did wonders with no money so the fact it just I just think the expectation will get the better of Sean Dice. I expect Sean Dice to be the first managerial second that is if we're not counting Lopetegu from uh, Wolves who apparently as I'm sat here again on the 8th of August he's out the door and Gary O'Neill could be coming in we're not counting that one Sean Dice once the season gets going will will be the first one out the door in my opinion the Carabao Cup bit of a stab at the dark of this one but I think Villa might do well in the Carabao Cup this year I really like the look of Villa under Unai Emery I go back to when Newcastle went to Villa Park last season we got torn several new arsenals on the day and they've only got better with the signings they've made in the summer Pau Torres as well I forgot to mention earlier uh, Tielemans in the middle of the park I think Ali Watkins will have a, a big season as well up front so Villa I can see winning the Carabao Cup but again it's a bit of a stab in the dark isn't it? the FA Cup Pep likes it, doesn't he? So I'm going to go for Manchester City in that one. It's a boring pick, but he's won a lot, hasn't he? He's won a fair few of them. So I'm going to go for Manchester City in the FA Cup. The Champions League, I can see it being Real Madrid's this year. Obviously, they've signed Bellingham. They've got Gula, who I know is injured currently, but he will be back towards the second half of the season, won't he? Um, and I just think, obviously, Bri- uh, Brahim Diaz as well. They've, uh, they've got back from Milan, where he was doing good stuff in the Champions League last season. I think all the pieces in that midfield especially, which is already one of the best midfields in the world, is even better now. So I think the Real Madrid will win the Champions League, and I think it might be written in the stars if it will if it will be uh, Ancelotti's last season at the club. There was rumours that he was going to take over Brazil in 2024. I guess the Brazil uh, Federation, whoever it was at the top of that, confirmed that news. But then Real Madrid and Ancelotti himself haven't confirmed that news. But you would say there's no smoke without fire. So the fact that he's leaving, all the stuff he's done at Madrid over his two ten years over the last ten years ago, maybe even a bit long, bit eleven years, isn't it? Yeah, eleven years. Uh, I think it's written in the stars for Real Madrid. Champions League win, Europa League it's a hard one to predict because we don't know who's going to be in the Europa League from the Champions League come the turn of the year. So, so the teams that are in there now, I think Roma will be sniffing about because Mourinho's then he knows his way around a European competition. But my favourites for the tournament right now in terms of who's in there as we're sat here at the start of August would be Liverpool. So Liverpool's trophy to lose, in my opinion. And the Conference League, I know I went for Villa as a bit of a stab in the dark for the uh, Carabao Cup, but I also think the Europa Conference League could be Aston Villa it's just because of Unai Emery and how much of a bastard he is in away games in Europe. He bloody loves them, so he does. So I think that'll stand Aston Villa in good Aston Villa, I should say, in good stead. And they'll get the claret and blue mantra that West Ham showed in the same competition last season and use it to good effect. So Aston Villa to win the Europa Conference League. That is it for my 2023-2024 predictions for the season. Let me know your uh, let me know yours down below in the comments. Give the video a like if you like it. Please don't dislike it because that harms a ton. Channel, please don't do that but also give us a subscribe as well i've been ross tweddle from holding give and i'll see you soon i don't know why i did that so weird but there we go